Hi, everybody. It's Andy Phillips here. And as you can see, I've got Mark on the line with us. Hi, Mark. Yes, good afternoon. How are you? Very, very good. Mark is our uh, resident tax expert. And uh, we're going to be talking about something that's going to be, well, it's already big, um, but it's sort of set to uh, increase, I think, um, because of circumstance and uh, other other things in the industry. So, and it's, and it's service accommodation. So we're going to talk about service accommodation. So do you want to get your presentation up and we'll start, we'll crack straight into it. Okay, presentation's there. Okay, so, there you go. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, this is a slightly unusual one today. Um, I, I am in a situation where other firms of accountants criticize that I give away too much knowledge. This topic is so big, actually, we're going to spread it over several broadcasts. We're going to focus it um, into really some, some detail. So today we'll be looking at an overview and then we'll get into more and more detail, as you can see. Right. Let's crack on. Um, first of all, the introduction to us. Um, you've seen this before, um, qualified accountant, uh, 47, eight me members of staff now, I don't really know how many. I am a landlord and have been for decades and was a property developer important slide nothing i say is going to be deemed professional advice you must take advice based on your circumstances from your accountant if your accountant's not up to snuff come see us so um service accommodation i'm going to start with um a bit of a sanitary story but sa service accommodation very profitable very profitable if it's done the right way um, and you can imagine going into your networking meeting, into your PIN meeting, and someone will say, you know, what do you do? I do, I do SA. Good. And there'll be five people doing SAs, but they might be doing it all slightly different. They might be using their own property, properties that they physically own in their own name. They might be on a rent to SA. They could be agents. They could be doing short term, longer term. Lots of variation going on, but we all have this catch-all phrase of service accommodation. Each one of these has their own taxes, so it's important to get it right. Really important to understand what you're doing up front. As always, I talk about structures and getting things done properly from day one. So now I'm going to give you a scary story. The clients will have heard one story that I'm going to give you, but I'm actually going to give you a second one. Um, chaps not using uh, property specialist accountant, he's using a general accountant. The general accountant saying, oh, yeah, yeah property, I, I know all about property, it's fine, you know, I read about it once. Um, and don't worry, VAT is not involved. Great. Lo and behold, of course, he's in service accommodation, VAT does get involved, it's, it's a huge topic. Um, and he found out when he had the bill from HMRC for £250,000. Now, that's a bit of a size check to write out. Um, came to us obviously in a bit of a state we managed to reduce it quite a bit um, and got it sorted that's the story everyone else has heard I use that story because it's one of the worst ones we've got a worse one even still more recent case the bill is 335,000 pounds from the tax man because the accountant said oh don't worry about VAT it's property VAT is not involved so wisdom is learning from the mistakes of others. You don't have to make every single mistake yourself, so learn from other people, please. Um, you see a nice little quote from Eleanor Roosevelt in the top corner of the presentation there. Wisdom, learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, I know this sounds like a pitch for my firm. Um, yeah, it is a bit, but it's a pitch that this is very important. Get advice from a property specialist accountant. It is one of my scary things right now. I see people on social media saying, introduced me to a property specialist accountant, 25 names are put up. I look at some of these names, this fresh out of university, they read a book. Um, there's probably only about five or six people in the country that I would recognize as being property expert accountants. There's not many of us. Doesn't matter which one you use, I prefer if it was us, but get someone that's actually got their hands dirty on this one. You need experience, you need knowledge. Okay, so very boring. I'm going to talk about what is service accommodation. Yes, I know that you should know, but bear with me. First of all, it's nothing whatsoever to do with property. It's not a property strategy. Why am I talking about it on a broadcast for PIN? Because lots of you are getting involved. It's not a property strategy. It's a B 
business strategy. Really important. If you listen to Simon, you all should know by now that I think he's one of the best ever trainers. He will distinguish between trade and investment. Um, now we've got this extra word business. What does that mean? We'll be covering that in a moment. You're letting out fully furnished property to guests, not tenants. And they could be on a short term or even slightly longer term. Um, and you will probably be, be offering services. There'll be tea, coffee provided as they arrive. Some of my clients offer a concierge service. They'll book tickets and airport collections and deliveries and all sorts of things. Quite similar to a hotel. Yes, you're going to have to work hard for property people dashing into service accommodation because they've listened to a podcast or something. It's a lot of work. You're exchanging time for money here. Um, and if you're going to get other people to do the work, that's fine. You've got to pay them. So it's going to affect your profits a bit. Um, but the point I've made is that the tax plan, the tax rules are different depending on your tax strategy. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to overview service accommodation. And then what Andy and I have planned is that there's going to be three more broadcasts. Now I know, as I've said, we get criticized for giving away too much knowledge. I think that's a good thing for me to give away knowledge and educate if I can. Um, we'll be dealing with three different segments in three subsequent broadcasts, just to make sure you get some real detail. Just because you're involved in one strategy, don't think you should ignore the others. You shouldn't. Please try to listen to all three because they all intermix. I said we're going to deal with this thing about business and trade. It is a vitally important distinction. I'm not going to deal with it right now. I'll deal with it on another slide, but I want you to keep it in your minds. This distinction, very important. So, bad news. Come on, you're speaking to an accountant. It's always bad news. Um, Nobody likes you. Government doesn't like you. HMRC doesn't like you. Rules will be changed. Let's be practical. Um, we all used to rent out ETLs. We realized that there's money to be made in HMOs. People dash into HMOs. Got Article 4 now. Got small rules. Trying to control you. Um, I'm turning the wheel around the wrong way. My apologies. I'll try and get this right. Um, so the government will change rules. Now you know that we've got other rules coming in for the government. These are the 90 day rules, some applied in London, ostensibly to protect the house in stock. I think there's another issue here, which is that there's more voters working for hotels than there are working in service accommodation. And landlords, we're not really liked by anybody, are we? Um, we're always seen as a, a bad people by the Labour Party, and therefore the Tories will jump on that bandwagon and tax us. HMRC, there's already been two attempts by HMRC to change the rules relating to furnished holiday lettings. Um, <laughs> would you believe it was the compliance with EEC regulation that forestalled them in 2011? Okay, um, Brexit, do you think HMRC might come back on the attack again about FHLs? It's feasible, isn't it? And we've got Brexit, probably got a few things to worry about in the meantime, but hmm, taxing landlords, it's got a juicy little area for them. So what's the point of me giving you bad news? If you're involved in the property business at all, always have a back door. You've got to have an exit strategy. So if you buy property because you want to rent it out under FHL rules, whatever, if those rules become too onerous, what are you going to do with the property instead? If you're doing a rent to SA, is there a break clause? That we look at what is your bank door. Very important. Okay, two slides on using property that you own already. So it could be that you're renting out some space in your own home. And quite often, that's the people's first experience of SA. Um, there's some allowances. We've got the rent a room scheme. Now you can earn seven and a half thousand pounds gross income. That's not profit, that's gross income. Um, and you can use the allowance and not pay tax. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> you could use it as an allowance and knock it off your gross income, not your profit, um, and pay tax on the balance of the gross income. Well, that's quite handy. Um, 
it might well be that you, you know, get a very small amount of income, for example, using B Airbnb or you know, using you know, your home just when there's a sporting event nearby or something. If your income is less than a thousand pounds, you don't even have to tell the government about it. So that's quite good. So we've got some allowances now for the homeowner in your own home. You can't claim these if you're not living there. You can't use your home and rent it out whilst you're abroad. Rent room doesn't work. You've got to be in residence. So these are very specialized areas that in reality probably aren't going to attract a lot of the investor market that we're used to working with. But it might be if you're just starting and you've started this way, these could be quite important to you. Capital gains isn't going to be affected by this as well because there isn't exclusive use of part of the property for a business. So there's your starting point for a lot of people. But now let's look at an investor. This is renting out property that you personally own under FHL. Just to remind you, FHL, furnished holiday lettings. It's very heavily regulated. I've already said to you, governments attacked it twice, or HMRC attacked it twice. Um, if you want to start reading up about this, and if you're going to get involved in FHL, you must read it. You must obey the rules. It's going to be guarded jealously, these rules. Look up HS253. HS253, if you comply with, gives you several advantages. Now, I'm going to loiter on this capital gains one for a moment. I keep talking about business and trade, don't I? There's a bit more information. Some of the capital gains analysis, that, you, that there's lots of advantages you're going to get, and I'll be talking about a few of them. But one of them is that you can get what's called business rollover relief. So you, it, you can take it out of your inheritance planning and pass it down to your children as an ongoing business. Yeah, that's until HMRC said, we'll attack this one. And they attacked successfully. I think it was seven cases and they won seven on the bounce. Brilliant. There was a case, uh, I'll be giving you some case references later in the presentation, um, where some of these, are, uh, they lost one. And they actually lost one related to, would you believe, a, a horse stables, um, paddocks area. Um, they lost another one related to FHL. Now there's a chink of light. I will explain the chink of light. But the distinction is, is it a trade or is it a business? So let me just do those words. You could be an investor and you're in the business of investing. An investment could be a business. There's no argument. But is it trade? So do not intermix words. When you read anything in legislation, you need to think about every single word that's there. When they talk about, are you in trade or are you in business? What do the words mean? Trade does not mean business. You could be in the business of investment. Are you in trade? So are you doing more than just investing and just looking after property? Are you doing concierge services? Are you um, providing a maid service? You know, the, the extent of services you provide. You've got to get more detail. That's what all these presentations are about, is to get into more and more detail. Capital allowances. Capital allowances are wonderful. This is not an investment property, it is a commercial property. It's, it looks like a residence, but it's used for commercial purposes. Therefore, you can claim capital allowances. Now that will reduce your tax bills. Excellent. If it's a business and trade, we can now have the earnings counted for pension relief. So you, you've done very well, you've claimed all your capital allowances, you've still got a big profit, you don't need the profit. You may decide to put it into your pension fund instead and get a tax deduction for that. Remember, put it into your pension fund. Maybe you've got a SAS. Maybe your SAS then loans money back to your company for other commercial property purposes. And the big one, why are so many of you thinking or rushing into SA? It's because of Section 24, the restriction on tax relief on mortgage interest does not apply to an FHL. Brilliant. Because you're under attack. The business rollover relief has been lost. Uh, it's this distinction. So for those of you who are techie, and I know quite a few of my competitors and other accountants listen to my videos, um, I'll give you three names there. Pawson was the one where we lost. It was pretty seminal. We were losing that one. 
and it was the Arbitrary Tribunal. I don't know how to pronounce this next name. Vine? With a silent G, maybe? This was his name. How would you pronounce it, Andy? Yeah, um, yeah, Vine. <laughs> Vine. Vine. <laughs> um, so this is a poor stable one, um, where actually they won just, and they were able to pass the asset down to inheritors without inheritance tax. And along comes Graham. Now, Graham also won at first tier tribunal using some of the guidance given at Vine. HMRC didn't take it to upper tier because they don't want to lose in upper tier. So at the moment, they're still saying, no, you can't have it. As always, anyone that listens to any accountant, the accountant will always be saying to you, paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. I'm sorry, I know we do, but there is a purpose to this. The way in which Graham won was they had immense records showing the amount of time that they were putting into the maintenance of the property, the amount of time that was being put into looking after the guests. And therefore, they tipped the balance in favour of it being a trade that was spending more time, effort, money looking after the guests than they were having to maintain property, for example. So they tipped the balance into being a trade and therefore they could pass the asset down free of inheritance tax. How do they do that? Good record keeping. Now, this is part one of a four part series. We're going to be spending part two of the broadcast series on FHL. I'll go into the record keeping that we use at Graham. I'll be looking at the accounting records we need, the diary records, the public records we'll be looking at for FHL to keep you safe. We'll also be talking about, of course, about capital allowances, section 24, etc. So if you're interested in FHL, owning property, which you rent out, please do listen to part two of the broadcast series, which Andy will publicize. Let's move on. Agency. Marketing is a skill, for goodness sake, you've got an expert with Andy here. Marketing is a skill, and those that have a flair for delivering what the guests want, and there's a really great chap in Cardiff, um, it's a great successful strategy where you can support others. But as an agent, either paid by commission or fixed fee, your business isn't service accommodation. Um, so therefore, VAT rules that apply to, for example, Rent to SA don't apply to you. But it's really important that those running agency fully understand exactly what's happening to the FHL owners, to the rent to SA operator, uh, operators, because they're the interface, aren't they, between the marketplace and those people. So they're great marketeers. They need to understand the rules. So the record keeping for this is different again. The structure of your accounting process is completely different again and very focused on um, your work as an operator, as an agent. But you need to know what your compatriots in other parts of the SA market are doing. So part three of this broadcast series will be focusing on the agent. OK. OK, here goes. Here's the big one. Um, rent to service accommodation by far and away the most popular style of, of business. But that's where your business, now, realistically, you're going to be a company for this. If it, because you don't want to suffer national insurance on your profits, for example, you do want to isolate yourself by limiting your liability. You want to keep, if you want to have an operating company, you want to keep it separate from your asset company, you're going to be a company. Um, everyone says, you know, should I buy things in my own name or not? This one, it's a bit of a gimme, you're going to be a company. Okay, so your company rents in property from somebody else, and then rents it onward to the guests. So it's very profitable. Um, but comes to risk, that's why you want the limited liability. But it's really important for you to understand the FHL. Because if these people are operating as FHL, and are struggling and it's you taking over by doing a rent to SA for them, or indeed, if they're not 
doing the essay themselves, they're just an investor and you're renting off them, which is the usual process. What's their situation with regard to VAT? Do you, have they got a problem coming because that's relevant to you because their problems will become your problems? Um, what are you going to do with long-term guests? What are you going to do with short-term guests? It's a high volume business. Right? It, that's why you're doing it. Um, rooms, you know, a house that you can rent out for £500 a month. If you do an essay with it, you might get eight, nine, one thousand pounds a month. It's a high volume business. Therefore, VAT will be passed. The threshold will be passed very quickly. And that's the situation that these guys sort of faced who ended up with these horrendous VAT bills. I told you, £335,000. What? Um, because they didn't do the VAT. So not only can it ruin your business, it can ruin you behind it. I say that, yes, you might have limited liability, but if you've been negligent, that can come back on the director. Um, and actually, in the case of the people I'm working with at the moment on this, this big problem, they're professional people. And therefore, the idea that they can have a company that fails affects their profession, um, can't be seen to fail. So number four in the broadcast, the last part, will be focused on the rent to SA. I'm going to be spending a lot of time on the VAT element. So cover it briefly here. I'm going to start to talk about this thing called TOMS. The Tor Operators Margin Scheme. Now, I was tempted to put the word margin on this slide into capitals and bold, and you know, but allow me to do that you know, vocally. It's the margin scheme. So what we're looking at here is we're not getting taxed on the income, not the gross income. We're, being, we're looking at the margin and what are deductible expenses to hit, get to your margin. Because it's the margin, when that gets to the threshold, that's when you have to VAT register. So that will delay your VAT registration date. So, great. Put some numbers to this. Now, again, not professional advice, your circumstances, but let me tell you on average. A person that does not qualify for TOMS might be handing over to HMRC approximately 16 to 17% of their gross income in VAT. Think about that, 16 to 17% of your gross income. Now, if you do operate the TOM scheme successfully, I'm used to seeing that figure at about five to 6%. So as a topic, how important is that? It's gonna save in tax 10% of your gross income. That's pretty important. Look at it from the taxman's perspective. He's got rules that will allow you to save 10% of your gross income. How jealously is he going to guard those rules? How closely are you going to be controlled to that? So this is within my firm. We have what we call the Tom's team. There are five of us specifically focused at Tom's. Okay. We've actually got a bookkeeper who is specialist looking after Tom's assistant accountants, accountants, consultants, we're looking at the TOMS. It's that big, it's that important, but it affects your contracts, it affects your bookkeeping, how you actually set up your Zero or your QuickBooks or whatever accounting system you have. Literally, how do you set up the chart of accounts is different for TOMS than it is for non-TOMS. Um, so obviously that's going to answer a really important aspect of it. The, 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 I think the... Sorry, Eddie, I'm just saying that, uh, I just think that it, I mean it, it is really important, but I think the the other thing about this is the the rent to SA. Um, the reason why you've got to look at uh, VAT pretty quickly is because, as you say, it, it's it's one of those businesses which is can be quickly scalable, oh, yeah. and you can you can shoot through the VAT um, barrier pretty pretty quick because there's 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 nothing nothing to there's yeah. nothing to buy there's no mortgages to to get hold of and things like that you know you're no. you're you're literally yeah. finding property that you know you can rent out for more money really is the whole concept of it um yeah. and there's lots of property like that yeah um and lots of people let, let's see you know, 
to talk about some of the things we're going to deal with in this in this fourth or final topic. Um, lots of people will have heard about the um, the fixed registration VAT schemes. Absolutely fine, but now you've got to be looking at are oh, you a limited cost trader? There's lots of in, intermixing. So if you've got guests who are staying for a long term with you, contractor market, maybe Tom's isn't right for you. Actually, what we've got to look at is instead the hotel scheme. Does the hotel scheme right. work for you? Is it appropriate? Does it work? Now, again, your VAT rate will be your, the rate you pay, the five, six percent will be a bit higher, but it's not going to be 16 to 17 percent. There's lots of options here. Um, and it's really important that everyone gets this right because it can completely ruin your business if you get it wrong. Just the idea of having to hand over 16, 17% of your gross income multiplied by however many years you get it wrong. Pretty important. Yeah, it seems like one of those sort of businesses that uh, there's lots of intricacies involved. Mm. Yes. And if you, if you, I guess that like everything else, it's like have a good plan, stick to the plan, understand how to structure the business, how to, yes. how to structure the taxes right yes. from day one, you know, yes. and go into it with eyes open. It's like everything we talk about, but it's, it's good to reiterate and it's like cracking the whip and telling people again and again and again, you yeah. know, just to, to get it done. You know, if you know where you're going to go and you know what your strategy is going to be, and if it's going to be something like rent to SA, then talk to you guys and, and and work out exactly what the plan of action is going to be, what sort of growth pattern you're going to have, what sort of taxes you're going to pay, what you need to set up as your business and, you, and the the structure of that business yeah. as well. It's so important. Well, I think knowledge, everything you've said, I, I agree with, but knowledge is power. Hmm. Go in with your eyes wide open. Those, that's your words. I agree with you. Knowledge is power. So I, I'm talking with one dear lady um, who her accountant is smart enough to say, I think I'm out of my depth now. You need somebody else. So actually it's her accountant sent her to me. Um, she is doing an agent. She is doing rent to SA. She has got her own property. And in her rent to SA, some of them are for short-term guests and some of them are long-term contractors. Great. Would you like to work out how to fix that little lot simultaneously and how many different structures and how much is intermixed and, where is each part going? Which part's going into her pocket? Which part's going into her company? It's a, you know, it's not a mess. She, she, she's too good a businesswoman for that. But knowledge is power, and actually getting that knowledge and, and moving it forward sensibly, um, very important. Very important. Mm. So, as a summary, then, folks, four topics. We've done an intro today. We're going to be looking at own property. FHL. We're going to look at agent. We're going to look at rent to SA. So three more topics to go. And we're going to get into more and more detail for each one. I do encourage you to look at all three broadcasts. I know there's a temptation to say, oh, well, you know, I'm only doing one of them. Unless you have an appreciation of the other person's position, how do you know how it affects you? So I would encourage you to, to see all three. Um, this is a first off, Randy and I, that we're doing this series. We're, we're, we're seeing to, if you guys want it, if this is what you like, hopefully we get some good feedback and that you do want to know this level of detail that we're going to go into. Brilliant. Today, and, and, today, there's your introduction, and I have done that in 30 minutes, which is what I said I will do. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. This uh, is, you know, it, it, how boring is that? I'm an accountant, for goodness sake. I look at the clock. Yeah, it's it's it is really really important. I look forward to the rest of them as well. Um, right. So what's so the next one's going to be about what specifically? Uh, the next one's going to be. I'm just going to come back to that screen, and there we are. I can see you again now. Um, and I'm going to not. I don't know how to. I, I don't know if that's working or not. Um, that's fine. So the next one's going to be about furnished holiday lettings. So this is where you own the property. Um, it could be that you're renting out some space in your own home. A, a lot of my SA operators do do that on the basis of I've got spare space. Why don't I just make some money from it? Yeah. Um, entrepreneurs, we are quite good at making. But also then owning property um, with the intent to rent it out to guests. So furnished holiday lettings. Um, and what happens if 
the guests are staying longer term what happens if you're in the off season what happens if your family's going to stay there what are you going to discount some of the tire uh, the, the cost for people staying there because it's on mates rates we're going to deal with fhl all right and we're going to get that in some detail i am going to focus on this distinction between business and trade because that's very important because it's going to affect inheritance tax yeah so that's a heck of a topic whether i can get that done in, there's no chance we're going to get that done in 30 minutes it's more like a 45 um but that's a big topic on its own right um, so that's the next presentation. I think we're actually due between Christmas and New Year, aren't we? I can't remember now, but no. Yeah, it probably, it probably will be. Probably we'll sit in between Christmas, New Year. Um, we'll get the times and everything else sorted out uh, and get that out in the newsletter as well. If you're not actually on the newsletter, let us know. Because... Depends much, it depends on how much Andy and I have to drink. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas and New Year. I think whether we do it in the New Year or not. Yeah. We can't see yeah, anybody. We're, we're, we're... instead. We'll work that out, but uh, yeah. So if you're not on the newsletter, then let us know um, because a lot of these, a lot of these uh, live events we put out on the newsletter a week beforehand, so it gives you plenty of time to uh, to set the time aside now, all that sort of thing. If you've got any queries, questions, uh, comments, put them underneath this video, and because uh, I know that Mark looks at this uh, at later yes. date and just. Uh, and starts putting uh, information into that as well. If you want to contact Mark, uh, we've got the uh, both the email and the telephone number under that. Just the email first, pin at property-tax-advice.co.uk. And the I'm going to do my caveat, every, which I do every single time. Um, this is just for some... some, some I don't know what's going on, Andy, because you're frozen on my screen. So I don't know if it's my end or yours. Looks like we dropped off the internet for a little few seconds there, or I did. Um, this is not for, uh, you know, ongoing advice. You know, you have to pay for that. That's uh, that's what he does as a business. But uh, he's kind enough to give you a little bit of advice uh, via email and things like that. So just use that. But as I say, don't take the mickey, which I always do. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, listen, Mark, it's been absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time again, as usual. Um, we'll get that uh, that next session sorted out and in the uh, in the email for the newsletter as well. So uh, until next time, thanks very much. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.